talking too long at my table. Uh, a lot of people, per usual. Yeah. Talking too long, me, who knew? <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael? Okay. Um, Where would you, you like you can have a seat, you can sit up front, uh, oh screen up. God. I think I'm, I think I talk louder when there's a mic in my face. Right. So I think I should stand out there and be able to hear me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. Hi Kansas City. Is this Hi. Oh god, I'm serious. I'm sorry in advance. If anyone of you are hard, are hard of hearing, you're in for a treat because you'll be like, oh I can hear now. <laughs> um, but I do text and I, yeah, you're gonna have to just have your I when I I'm talking very Quietly now. This is what happens. They're like, can we get a soundtrack? I'm like, test one, two, three. And then I'm like, ha ma da ma <laughs> So brace yourselves. Hi guys, sorry to keep you waiting. I to those of you who are in line, I I like talking a lot. This is why I'm an actor, so I know when to end a sentence. Otherwise I don't ever. <laughs> most of most of you have who have met me already or have seen, I I'm the one keeping everybody where they're like Okay, we really have to go meet Billy Zane now, but thank you. I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I could just keep doing like a one-woman so show. Long. Wait, why are you not gonna, don't make me sit by myself. <laughs> Michael, I mean, unless you just have no idea what to ask, then I can just keep well, working. Well, the guy that's supposed to do that, <laughs> I'm actually the security guy about the smoking doors. Right? <laughs> but I also know how okay. to use this. That's all that matters. Okay, here's my question for you. I'll, I'll we'll flip the script. All right. Um, have you ever seen? It's okay. Don't lie, though. You really don't want to lie. Have you ever seen Ash versus Evil Dead? I have. Okay. So you can think of something to ask, and then we'll maybe, I'll we'll just open it up to the audience. Okay. Yeah, but maybe talking to the mic because you're way quieter than I am. <laughs> you look like you could be I in a band. Know. There you go. You could be in a band, Mike. I, I might be in a band with the promoter of this wonderful event. Look at that. <laughs> Say, look, that was not planned, guys, really. Why don't you plug the band? Uh, we're called Devil Sex. Devil Sex? <laughs> I am so fucking listening to that band solely because it's called Devil Sex. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Oh, right. If, and, were there any children? <laughs> I have not been in. Okay, I'm gonna just come out and say I have. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have. I. I want to say first of all, let's just wait. Let's just start over. We're gonna start over. Okay, wait. Intro me again. We're starting. <laughs> Kansas City Crypticon. Please put your claws together for Dana DiLorenzo. <laughs> Kansas City. Yeah, barbecue. Hi guys, I'm so, so this is what I wanted to say <laughs> with the redo. I am just so happy you guys all came out and I am so grateful to Kansas City for having this. Although we were supposed to do it in 2020, I think as most of you know, and obviously a few things went wrong there. We couldn't, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't leave our houses. Um, so, uh, well, at least in LA. So I'm just so happy to see you guys. And, and I already have like an annoying amount of energy I, I was, this is how I learned how to talk and I never shut up, as my mom said. Um, but so, I, forgive me in advance because when I start geeking out with you guys about the show or going back into Kelly Maxwell, any of you who've seen the show know, like one of the things that, be, that just sort of became Kelly's thing is swearing. And a lot of that was because of Bruce Campbell, actually, because I think it was like the third table read of the, of the first season and they and he was he said like am I allowed to swear am I allowed to swear I guess I should yes. oh. <laughs> like, fucking great that's what I was saying is that like I slip into Kelly and I just fucking swear and I swear a lot and my whenever my my both my 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 mom before she passed but my mom was able to come see a convention and my dad came to one in Chicago and they were like you just you swear too much I'm like it's my character you know, like, no um, but so that's what happens. I apologize in advance. The more I get into Kelly, the more I swear. And to where I was going with the um, Bruce Campbell thing was he had a swear word. Like he said, fuck or something in the script. And I had had a couple and, and it was him who said, you know, I have a suggestion like to Rob Tapper or whoever was there, like the producers and writers. He goes, I don't think Ash should swear like at that much or any other character should swear that much at all except for Kelly, because she does it so very well. And I was like, thanks. Um, and so that's why if you notice throughout the series, Bruce 
um, mostly swears by like, you know, sorry, this is the only one that comes to mind because it made me laugh so hard. Suck my hairy bills, ball. Um, or um, like, ah, oh, dip. Like that was all very much Bruce Campbell. And I think that was very funny that Bruce, that Ash Williams does not swear or says silly things. And then Kelly's like, what the actual fuck? All the time. Spells it out. Spells it every time. Everything was like, if you look at the lines, it's pretty much there was a fucker or a shit. Like if any of you played that drinking game um, that we were doing when, when the show was on stars, we were live tweeting. And I think it was actually Ray, uh, who plays Pablo, came up with the game. Like every time, Kelly swears, do a shot. People were like, I'm five minutes in and I'm fucking wasted. <laughs> that's fun. All right, guys, that's our time. Nice to see you. All right, Kelly, well, I've got a question. I think everyone. That's okay, know. Kelly, I answered, I prefer, actually, I prefer that because then I, I still well, seem actually, cool I and I'm not fucking cool. For Dana and I have Kelly a cool. question for Kelly. Kelly, yes, what the fuck? So Dana, do you do your own stunts? That's a very good question. No, I, well, I did what they would legally allow me to do because it turns out, um, like people like Tom Cruise <laughs> um, cost the productions lots of money because it's badass that he does them himself, but like then they're like, yeah, but if you die, we don't have a movie. So like that's why not a lot of people can do full on their own stunts because then, you know, something goes wrong, which it often does. Those stunt people, I'm glad you asked that because stunts people don't get enough credit um, so mine was Crystal Pratt, who did, if you, God, you guys probably don't even realize, but like anything that was a physical hit, going up into the rafters when I was getting the shit kicked out of me by the cabin, getting spit out through the door, they literally like put her in a fucking cannon, and she just, I mean, in a blood cannon, and like, I thought she, I was like a little worried. She, um, but then she actually, in doing one of my stunts, tore her ACL, so I had to do that one, which was when we were being attacked by the tree, and I was hanging upside down in the woods of New Zealand by my ankles, um, for about half a day. That's a high I never, never need experience again. What? Were there drop bears? Were there what? Drop bears. Drop? That's the Australian jokes when you're... Well, we were in New Zealand, bro. Different country. They know what drop bears are in New Zealand as well. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not... A, I, okay, drop bears? No, yeah. but now I have to know this so I can tell my Kiwi friends. It, it, it's one of those things like there's a dick four on your back. They use it on... Tourists. Are you speaking English? I don't understand what you're saying. There, There's a dick for on your What's back. a dick for? <laughs> <laughs> it's a game to play with tourists. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of what, wait, can I just tell one little anecdote with that? You may, you may. Because you just reminded me. I was on, so by the way, if you got New Zealand, I cannot say enough about it. Um, it's if you leave from LA, so when if you guys are here, you would fly to LA. Stay there overnight in LA, get your bearings, and then fly. It's only, it's not even an 11 hour flight, which sounds like a lot with the time difference. It's really not, because you leave at night, you sleep on the plane, you watch a movie, you wake up, you eat breakfast, you're there, and it's the morning time. It's, I cannot say enough about it. Put on the top of your list. I just, I'm a poster child for New Zealand. But what I love too is um, everybody, the kids there are very well behaved. And it was something that was fascinating, because it was like, um, there was really not a lot of shitty kids in the, <laughs> which, sorry, I even have friends that have a lot, they're shitty kids. And so, but what I loved was it's because on one particular day, we were on this, because everything, you know, it's an island, so it, it, everything was surrounded by water. And we were all going to Waikiki Island, which was a ferry boat, like a 45 ferry boat away to a vineyard and just a beautiful area, whatever. And this mother, this child was having a little bit of a tantrum, um, like a two-year-old, and this mother was, she was like a linebacker, and she was holding him, and he was just like, you know, that shitty kid noise, and she was like, he's like, let, and she's bear hugging him, right, and so he's like this, and he's like, let me go, and she's like, no, you being a dick, I was like, what is she doing, and he goes, I want to go, and she's like, not till you're done being a dick. Like, being a dick. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's my favorite dick moment in <laughs> New Zealand. Okay. Anyway, good parenting, guys. Good parenting. All right, moving on. All right, and then my question for Kelly is, do you go commando? 
Oh, my in the God. theater. <laughs> not, not you personally, but Kelly. Dude, as Kelly Maxwell, I just want to know where the fuck is your comedy show that you're doing? Because I need to buy tickets to it immediately. You and Ash Williams really have a solid sense of humor. Um, no and no. Alright, now the world knows. Okay. Now it <laughs> well, we're gonna open it up for some questions. Mike, I enjoy you very much, devil sex. <laughs> devil sex, commando. Oh, you're recording this? Only the good parts. <laughs> for posterity. <laughs> That's what all my friends say after a night of drinking. And then it's never for, just don't show my family, is all I have. I'm playing a character, right? I'm right. I'm seeing, going down the list. <laughs> okay. All right, does anyone have any questions for Dana? Nope. Okay, great. <laughs> Why don't you ever shut the fuck up? And my answer is, I don't know. I don't know how to. Come on, someone has a question. I don't bite you. I know. I don't care. It's not stupid, and I've probably heard it before, and I have an answer for you. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Oh, my God. My first in line. Hi again. What projects are you working on? What projects am I working on? That's a great question. <laughs> no, you know, the, 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 obviously, like, the town really kind of shut down uh, during the pandemic, but I did get to do... Um, a couple cool things that are going to be c coming out that I've never done before. But in terms of what I'm working on, um, as I'm pretty sure some of you know, or maybe you don't, one really good thing that the Evil Dead world is continuing, um, yes, they have a new movie coming out, different universe. I've actually talked to the really awesome director, Lee Cronin. He's an Irish guy. I could understand maybe. He talks faster than I do, but he talks with an Irish accent. And I was like, what? Um, uh, but I, he's going to do right by you guys for sure. Um, but uh, we're doing Evil Dead the video game, and they actually got Bruce and Ray and I to all be able to, to do it, so I haven't voiced it yet, and I hope I get to do some fun things as Kelly Maxwell, but the, the six-year-old Nintendo geek in me, um, like I'm talking, I'm gonna age myself, but it's like I'm talking NES, I'm talking anybody who played Contra, up, down, left, right, A, B, B, A, B, B, A, select, start, yes, motherfuckers! Get that game, genie. Um, Tech Mobile, Tech Mobile. I was, it was, Jerry Rice was a big guy at the time, I think, on there, yeah? Anyway, um, this is not those games. This was like, oh, this is legit. Um, so that we're gonna keep the show alive in that sense. I'm excited to bring Kelly back in that way. When we're working on that, and then I got to um, uh, check a bucket list item off and voice a character, like an original, it's not part of the Warner Brothers world as of yet, I mean, ever, but I mean, um, until now. So um, there's a new, I'm so excited about it, I'm such a geek. There's a new Sylvester and Tweety movie, and I get to play, there's like not many voices, it's like Sylvester Tweety Granny, and like, I'm like, ah, and um, like one other, like the bad guy, and I'm the henchman to the bad guy. And, but it's such a, like, in such a funny way, like, it's so not what you expect. And I have to say, I was very, I had a little too much fun. Again, just like when I meet you guys, the producers and the editor and the thing, they're like, all right, goodbye. And I'm like, no, but let me just try this again. So I was thinking, they're like, no, you need to leave now. Like, I, it was, but it was such a, such a joy. So um, that's going to be coming out probably, I don't even know, animation takes a long time, a year. And um, <laughs> I have a movie coming. Um, that I helped produce. My friends did it uh, over COVID, like individually, all shot on an iPhone uh, app, but it's really cool. It's a dark comedy called The Disappearance of Toby Blackwood, and I play a psycho ex-girlfriend. <laughs> That's how it's fun. Um, and it's a, it's a dark comedy about this guy who used to be friends with his kid uh, growing up, and um, has lost touch with him, but this guy becomes like a YouTube star, this Toby guy. And everyone, yeah, because this guy is going through a divorce, he ends up like just being like, oh, what's that Toby guy up to I used to be friends with? And it turns out he's like gone and no one could find him. So it becomes this like ridiculous caper of I'm going to find my old friend. And it's great. Simon Pegg's in it. Um, uh, Luis Guzman. Um, uh, we got a lot of like Lamar Morris, like a lot of good people in it. So, thank you for that question. Good question. I believe uh, Steve Buscemi here in the front row had a question. <laughs> oh my God, Guys, my, okay, it really my is this comedy show. show. Dude, oh. Steve, I, I love you, Steve. Thank you. You know what? I, my, one of my favorites is Billy Madison. Oh. When you put on that lipstick. Uh, I do too. Shampoo is better. Oh, I love 
The dog or the penguin? It was the dog. Like, Who's the fuck's the dog? Was talking on TV. Like, it was a, oh, that's very specific. Okay. It was a two second clip. <laughs> and what, it is, what was the punchline? Speak for yourself, Speak. moron. And the dog <laughs> said it. God, this is such good movies. I like, no, I got you, girl. Girl, let's watch it. We'll watch it. We'll laugh together, and I want to watch it with you. So. Hi. See, I always get Reservoir Dogs. That's what they always say. Just see oh, what right. The only movie that swears more than I do is Kelly Maxwell. <laughs> um, That's a compliment. Little... Steve Buscemi's a badass. Yeah. Mr. Like... Pink doesn't tip. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, everybody. Mike, let's go ahead. <laughs> Honestly, dude, I think you should be doing comedy. I think you really should be. Clearly. You really should. Yes, sir. So what is your rational name? It's Seth. Seth. Yes. Hi, Seth. And what's your name, lovely? I'm Kylie. Hi, Kylie and Seth. You're adorable, both of you. I was like 15 when was born. Yeah. Well, you look 15 now, so you're doing well, girl. <laughs> you're like, I would, honestly, whatever you're doing, tell me your secret. He's secrets. my brother, not my child. <laughs> no, I think, I know. Okay, no, I, I can know. tell by how, you, how he's sitting just enough. <laughs> no, is I have a brother, too. I do, no, and I'm like, and my, and also my people, what is it with people thinking dads are, are like, because I, I call my dad daddy a lot of time. They're like, and well, one person like, I was like, yeah, no, they were like, at one point I was like, dad, or I said dad instead of daddy, and this one was like, oh, thank God, because I thought you were dating him. I was, my dad was like, and my dad burned me. My dad's like, uh, no offense, but after living with her, no one would be married. I was like, dad. Anyway, okay, guys, enough about me. Go ahead. <laughs> Brother. Um, yeah, well, I love you, so I'll- I love I'll you! you. I, I love that you're here with your sister. Yeah, she's so nice, she's coming. I know, because she's a lot older than you, that's what she said, she was 15. I, my brother's four years younger, and we don't, we hate each other half the time, so. You it, lucked out. It took a while. It took a while. Oh, I know, it took, I know. She's not the age. <laughs> Guys are dicks, like, up until, I mean, pretty much the whole time. No, but that's fine. Was, up until, I like, 20. Wait, yeah. I was oh, you're with the asshole. How this child was born. Okay. Was, oh was like, yeah. Well, let's, I want to talk about our life stories and how similar they are after this, but tell me what he you're... Loves, he's such a fan of you. Yeah. I love you. Thank you. Is uh, that your question? That means a lot. Uh, so, Sam Raimi, I know that he... Are you a fucking deadite? What is with your face, bro? <laughs> I haven't been my face <laughs> Did you bring me a beer? You came all the way from wherever the fuck I like. Did you like it? I know him. <laughs> we could go way back to Sacramento, kind. Okay, you get me a beer and I won't chop your head off. <laughs> it looks good though, by the way. No, no, just not, another second. I'm so we have to get through the. I have to get through this question, but I love your face. It did a good job with your face. Go ahead. So, what, I'm sorry, you asked me and I already forgot what you asked me. I started to say, so Sam Raimi yes. directed the first episode. I just want to know, was he like on set ever after the first episode or did he just bail after the first so episode? So in case you guys couldn't hear, he said Sam Raimi, he directed the first episode. Was he ever on set after the first episode? No. Um, because he's Sam fucking Raimi. Yeah. So, God. well, he, I could go on for another 20 minutes about this. I, let me just, I, my family is fascinated by this stuff. I did like an AT&T commercial, national commercial, Face Cake, it was called way back when. Like, ooh, face, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but I guess why I'm bringing that up is, I had probably for a 30 second AT&T commercial, I had probably an audition and then probably seven, eight callbacks. Meaning you go back and you do this, how many times you need to see this? I said one word or whatever. Um, that, so, 30 second commercial, eight times I went back, right? This, I had an audition, I had a call back a week later, and a week after that I'm screen testing with Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi, and I was like, what the actual fuck is happening? Um, but, uh, we have to go, five minutes. Oh boy, well this will be the end of the, so if anyone else has a burning question, get it ready. Okay, he does, okay, you're tiny, you're drinking a beer, you're just questions. <laughs> All right, wait, let me finish. Here's the thing. So I, ne I truly, I had read an article, because I knew this uh, franchise, I was a fan of it, and I had seen an article, because I always like to research where they're at with it, and I was like, oh shit, it's actually Bruce fucking Campbell's coming back? Like, reprising a role? That doesn't happen. Like, I mean, what, they brought back, uh, you know, in little, like, franchises, like, you'll bring back Harrison Ford, and they brought back Carrie Fisher right for a moment, but in terms of the whole thing, 
I mean, that's a pretty big deal, especially for that character. So, um, I was like, he'd written, he had said something in an interview, we're looking for a Jennifer Lawrence type. And just another thing, like, uh, still to this day, they always are gonna go with a name. They're not gonna cast Dana DiLorenzo from Youngstown, Ohio, they're just not. So I was like, I'm screen testing with these people. Um, that's in the whole other, we don't need to go into it. I just found out my mom had it was stage four cancer. I was, I was like, I'm not going to New Zealand. I have to be with my mother, blah, blah, blah. So I went into it like, how cool I get to go meet Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. I love Bubba Hotel, I loved all, all of it, right? And I had zero expectations. So I go in, Sam Raimi, always in a suit, is the most and least intimidating person in the room. And what I mean by that is, you walk in, I walked into a room like this only with like nice lighting, you know, like stage lighting and it was all these producers and I go up and Sam's the first one, he's like, hello, so happy you would give us, grace us with your time. And I was like, oh hi, who, oh, you're, hello, Mr. Raby. He goes, oh, you can just call me Sam. And I'm like, within five minutes, you're talking to him like he's Sam the butcher from the grocery store. <laughs> and then he walks away and you're like, hey, see you later. I think immediately I was like, hey, bye bye, 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 bye. And he walked away and I was like, Holy shit, that was Sam Raimi. <laughs> you know? Bruce Campbell is just intimidating in general, because he's also a he's this tall, you know what I mean? He's like that tall. And he has, but we we all we hit it off right away. He immediately looked at me when we had to do the I know we're wrapping up. We he looked at me when we had to like do a side by side to see, make sure I wasn't taller than him, which without these heels, I came up to his hips, I swear to God. So the very first moment with Bruce Campbell, in this moment with Sam Raimi, where I'm like, I'm never gonna get this. I lay like sit side by side and I have to face him. All I did at this point had shaken his hand, right? I was mostly talking to Sam. And so here's Bruce and he looked, <laughs> this is what he did, you're me. In a screen test, in front of Sam Raimi. Okay, just want to set the scene. So he goes like this. <laughs> and I go, and on camera, you see all of this. I have the tape of it. They're like, I go, oh, thanks a lot, Bruce. First thing I ever said to him. And he goes, what? It's a horror show. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, so but Sam Raimi did have like a, apparently he watched a lot of the stuff, but he was the most, every, he's, I cannot say enough about him, but my favorite part was watching him torture Bruce. That's all I gotta say. Watching Sam Raimi torture Bruce in a real way, especially with that doll he had on a stick, there's a photo, if you can find it, it's on the internet of him, like that little Lori doll. And when they did it, because it's like Sam's very practical, so he had it on a stick at one point and he's putting it in Bruce's face. We were, we ruined takes because the whole crew was howling with laughter. Because Bruce, Sam's shorter than Bruce, and he's like, mm, mm, and he's enjoying putting this doll in, like, smashing Bruce's face. And Bruce has to, like, be, and he can't, like, do anything except act at the moment. You guys got to, there's a uh, picture of it. Look it up with Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, uh, Lil Lori. Um, well, speaking of pictures, uh, we're scheduled to do pictures. Correctly. We're not going to need a half hour. I'm just saying it'll be but okay sure so, I understand but you're very good I want to you devil sex is your band yeah in your comedy show is when uh, it's still being written and okay <laughs> well guys you just witnessed him working out a set here today yeah. with that what is a dick well, moment. Maybe, yeah. all right so uh yes yeah, Dana will be doing photos directly next door here uh if you guys want to get your photos with Dana and my table you can find me and guys I, I'm sorry. I just I'm so excited to be here, and I'm sorry that I'm talk so much and so loud all the time. But thank you all for coming out. I know some of you, whether you came, you know, from near or far. Like, I really just love geeking out with you guys. Thank you for th honest to God. Like, you guys get me through everything. You got me through the pandemic just to have people to be like, Hey, can we just talk about this show for a little bit? Because it's I, I just I'm so proud of it. I was so I love that people appreciate it. It was all made for you. Everything we did, I just know from the writers they'd all talk about it, was for lifelong fans especially. Um, but thank you for accepting the show and for sitting and listening to my sorry ass talk all all night. So come say hi at my table. I'd love to see you and give you a fist bump. And then you can tell me to shut the fuck up with Uber. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Nice. Nice.